I had the chance to interview Doc Burford, a games critic, writer, and developer, on his upcoming game, Adios, which is about a pig farmer, the mob, and ask you questions like, what would you do and who would you call if you only had a day to live? Now, we talked a lot about his philosophy on storytelling, on game development, but also what to do if you're stuck developing a game during a pandemic, just like he was. Honestly, this video could have been about an hour long, but for now, I'm going to let Doc introduce himself and give you a bit of context as to where he's coming from, and hopefully that'll help shape what you think about how he made Adios during a pandemic. I'm Doc Burford. Uh... I was not going to make video games for the vast majority of my life. My plan was to be a pilot. And then in 2005, I started getting sick. And by 2008, um, a doctor was like, yeah, so you have a metabolic condition where you are not getting rid of benzene. And they were like, yeah, you're getting really, really sick. And the reason is you're living near the airport. You're not going to be able to fly again. And so I was like, OK, sure. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Like. I couldn't do the thing that I prepped my entire life for. For me, living on campus, but getting sick and, and kind of being unable to fly planes, during that time period, it was like my life took a, a sharp turn. But I also played some of the most important games in my life. I played Stalker, System Shock, Crisis, and Fear. And I played all those games right around the exact same time, and they kind of shaped the value system I had for games. Being disabled, um, limits a lot of what I can do. I used to do things like rock climbing and canoeing. I, you know, I did like a 50 mile canoe trip in the Boundary Waters. I've climbed mountains. I, I used to be able to do a lot of things when I could get out of the house. Because I can't do that as much anymore. You know, I can't even go to like concerts or whatever. So that kind of leaves games, right? And as somebody who wants to make games, I believe in literacy. So by playing a lot of games, I can develop an understanding of why certain games work, why certain games don't, why people are, you know, flock to one game and not others. Eventually, Doc went on to create Paratopic, 2018's first-person short horror video game with 90s-inspired graphics and an unsettling, atmospheric story. But Doc's vision for the game wasn't purely inspired by the story he'd come up with. It was partially a reaction to other games within the same space that he thought lacked something. Uh, with Paratopic, you know, when I was working on that, I had played a bunch of walking sims, like Gone Home, and I wrote a piece about Walking Sims and why I didn't like them, which is these games don't have verbs. They are a, a verb in a game, just for people who don't know, is the thing you can do. So like verb is to shoot, verb is to drive. Those are verbs. Um, and in a lot of Walking Sims, you walk and you listen to a story. Sometimes you rummage through doors. And it's not really interesting, especially because it is solipsistic in a different way in that you are the only person around in that game. So I, I sat there and I thought, okay, I want to make a game that's all verbs. So if you've played Pair Topic, you know there's driving, there's talking to people, because I wanted to make sure the game had other people in it. You know, there's shooting, there's shooting with a camera. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do. And, and in Adios, we, we've kind of even pushed further into that, which is where you spend a lot of time with the person who can now walk around. That was my next sort of step is, Okay, now that we can do a lot of verbs, can we flesh out those verbs maybe a little bit more? And can we bring like a, a real person? Into it? Can we simulate a person? I want to create things in spaces that feel interesting, but I got there from playing games that do the opposite. The story that the games think they're telling is the audio logs. Moving on from Paratopic meant forming a new studio, which meant acquiring new funding for a brand new project. But Doc found that his eagerness to create his next game led him to several different ideas, one of which ended up becoming the pitch for Adios. And in just a few short months, he and his team had acquired funding and were allowed to make Adios into a fully fledged game. I scheduled out the entire game day and game structure between that February tweet and that March pitch. It came together very quickly. And then, you know, we waited until we got funding and then stuff happened. Like I got surgery uh, for dental work and then I had COVID. Um, so that slowed us down a bit, but we are later than I had hoped. I thought we could have done it quicker, but like, you know, when you get COVID, it, it really slows things down because um, you can't even get out of bed. You're coughing so much. So that was fun. Uh, but yeah, like we, 
I scoped out really early, here's what the game is. And we haven't deviated from that scope much. There have been a few things where it's like, okay, this would take longer than we thought. Like, you know, we did the best we could with the money we had and the time we had and the COVID we had. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. One of the reasons I was so excited to talk to Doc was to get his take on game development during COVID-19, but especially within the indie space. Now, Adios has the challenge, like any other game, of bringing together a group of people of varying talents and disciplines and skill sets all to create a singular vision. But how does the experience of making a game like Adios affect developers who are all on different spectrums of situations during a pandemic? COVID made things chaotic. Like when I am dealing with running a temperature and also trying to get additional funding to extend the duration of the game and also trying to uh, finish up a script and schedule a call and uh, you know, all these other things, you know, provide art references for the artists, you know, triage happens and things get lost in the shuffle. Um, as a director, there's just a lot you're doing all the time. So having a really good producer is super important. Um, working online, other stuff would be like regular voice calls and stuff. Um, you know, making sure you're getting up and exercising a bit. You are, you know, it's hard when you shouldn't really be leaving the house, but like, make sure you get sunlight. Like. Do a lot of things that are good for your body and your health and your physical activity, but also, you know, accept that, like, embrace that this is not normal and that this is going to be difficult. Do not beat yourself up for low productivity. You know, my, my programmer is doing that to himself. And I was like, dude, there's a pandemic on, like, it's stressful. Like you are being stressed. And because of that, it's impacting your ability to work just like it's impacting everyone else's ability to work. Like, forgive yourself because it's not your failing you are working under extraordinary circumstances. I think a lot of indies have discipline issues. For instance, my programmer on Adios, he loves programming. And because he loves programming, uh, sometimes I'll be working at like, or we'll be hanging out just on a Discord chat, playing video games together at like 10 at night. And he'll be in the voice chat and he'll go, he'll ask me like a work question. And I'll be like, this is not work time. And he'll be like, oh, and then I'll be like, wait, are you working right now? Don't be working right now. And I'm like, yeah, well, it's fun. I enjoy programming. And it's like, no, dude, you have to split your time. And a big problem that I see in working from home is when you are unable to differentiate your time, your productivity diminishes, the quality of your work diminishes, and your brain starts thinking about work all the time. So your quality of life diminishes because you're, you're, not able to relax. One of my last questions for Doc was about the future. What type of games he wanted to make, what kind of developer he wanted to be, and how he would like to be remembered. I'll leave you with his answer and also just say that Adios is going to be out on Steam this Wednesday, March 17th. If you like the interview, you like the video, maybe go buy a copy when it comes out and support an indie developer. Here's Doc. Like when I sit down and I want to make a game, I know that I want the game to be unique. I know that I want there to be nothing else like it out there every game i want to achieve a certain effect whether that's fear or stress or melancholy or happiness or you know elation whatever i want to create a certain set of vibes and i want people to have that and i want people to think there is nothing else like this out there so i, I think you know i probably want to be remembered for my uniqueness as a creator i i, I want to i want trust right i want to go up on stage and you know at e3 and say i'm making a new game and it's about something you know no one would anticipate and then have people get excited because they trust me they know i will make things that they like that surprises them i, I want people to think about games to create them to come at them from a place of shaping how people feel about the experience that they are having This is Kyle from Subpixel. If you like this video and you're still around, give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a kiss.